I'm here in my studio in East Hampton, New York, where I've been for the last six or seven weeks, waiting out the virus. Um, and I've been looking at the uh, at a few photographs that I own um, by a photographer named Miroslav Sixi. Sixi was a um, from a small town in the Czech Republic, uh, Kajov, where he spent, except for a couple of years in Prague, studying at the academy, where he spent his whole life um, as a kind of dissident, refusenik, street artist, or in some view, um, a kind of a, a bum, or um, it wasn't homeless exactly. He lived with his parents, but he was he acted like a um, like someone who lived on the street. Uh, Sixi refused to um, go along with the the mandate to paint in the proletariat realist style of the day, and turned to um, street photography, making um, images capturing images on the fly, using cameras that he made himself out of whatever was at hand, a cardboard tube, uh, an oatmeal box, uh, lenses were made out of cellophane tape, uh, and the, the cameras were, were deliberately and self-consciously crude, ineffective, and, um, and unprofessional. Uh, he had a presence in his hometown, but a kind of benign, long beard, long hair, uh, street person who was recognized at the time as, as, a, as a kind of harmless eccentric. Uh, what he used the cameras for was to capture images primarily of women uh, taken on the fly surreptitiously, usually without their knowledge. Uh, at, at a certain point after a number of years of this, he became recognized uh, when women would see him at the park or the edge of the, the pool where he was not allowed to go. And we actually would kind of flash him or, or perform for him on the assumption that the who made uh, contraptions that he was carrying around weren't real cameras, and therefore that they were not actually being photographed, but in fact they were, and he was a very kind of conscious artist to work in this way to achieve a certain kind of image. The images look like this. They're out of focus, light spotted, uh, can very, how to put it, primitive technology. And you can see that the, the images, the subjects and the pictures, the women are completely, for the most part, completely unselfconscious. This is an, an example of one where we can't tell if the subject is deliberately raising her skirt or she she to photograph her in this way, or if it's she was just simply scratching herself and he happened to be there at the right time. But in each case, the photographs have a immediacy, they have the, that quality, which I suppose all photography has, that unrepeatable instant in time in which things could only have been thus and would only be thus for an instant and thereafter never again exactly as, as that. Interestingly, Tishi only printed one print per negative, so each one of these photographs is in fact unique. There were at the end of his life thousands of these images, most of which had never been seen. He was essentially operating under the radar, uh, and only at the very end of his life, uh, around, ten, around 2010, uh, began to be recognized for the artist that he, that I believe he was, and maybe believe he was. Um, what is so special about the, about the photographs? Uh, this is, I think, a good example. If you think about what the real subject of photography is, we say it's it's really about light. Photography is really about light and shadow, and how light defines a form, and how the the magic of capturing 
a gesture as it is defined by, or as it is, it is created by, light itself. In this image, Sixi has has given us a kind of a kind of glory of value pattern, blacks, black, whites, and grays in such a perfectly calibrated, perfectly integrated uh, sense of proportion that the blazing white of the, of the woman's shirt goes beyond mere description of form. It takes on a kind of life of the photographic image itself as something created by light hitting a surface and, and the photographer having been there and seen that and recording it so that now we, all these decades later, can have a similar vicarious experience. This image is one of my favorites. There's something about the, the gesture, the act of whatever that woman is doing, scratching her neck. It almost looks as though she's being showered with a kind of brilliant powder of light that reminds me of a perhaps a painting by Titian or someone else of the Venetian school. There's some act of grace that's being captured in the photograph. And the fact that the subject is unwitting or if performing, doing so in such an unserious, casual way that ironically brings to the image a sense of gravitas. I think overall the, the impressive thing about, about Sixi as an artist is his insistence on the primacy of his gaze, the kinds of things which might be considered today incorrect or maybe indefensible. But as an artist, the indefensibleness, the indefensible nature of his activity is in, in a sense part of the point. It's the artist's prerogative to, to be, to transgress exactly on that score, that to insist that no, no, these are actually images of great beauty and great delicacy and, great, and their great intimacy even if transgressive is still a gift and something we shall be grateful for.